Good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be with you this morning. I'm feeling a little bit tired because a few of us were at LL the last uh, couple of days uh, experiencing some great teaching and learning. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. But um, I'm excited to be here because today we are starting this new teaching series about hearing God's voice. And I think this is going to be an important series for us about hearing God's voice. Because the reason why I wanted to do this was in my observation, the average Christian person doesn't have a confidence that they can hear God's voice. You know, I speak to people and I hear stories. And for so many people that I speak to, they feel like I can't hear what God is saying. Does God even speak to me? And so we want to do this series to seek to address that and to see what the Bible actually has to say about this topic. Now, as we come to this, you may be coming with a few assumptions about the way that God works. Maybe for some of you, you assume that God doesn't speak, right? You might think, God, He just simply doesn't speak. Or if He did speak, He spoke way back then in biblical times and He doesn't speak now. So maybe you've been thinking that, right? Does God speak? Maybe you've been thinking, can everyone hear God's voice? Or is it only for special people? So you might be going, maybe God only speaks to pastors or kings and queens and official people. Or maybe He only speaks to like the really good Christians, right? Maybe they're the people that God speaks to. You might be thinking that. And the deeper question under all of this is really, can I learn to hear God speak? Can I learn to hear God's voice? Because for a lot of us, when we have these assumptions about God not speaking or He speaks to other people or to special people, it leaves us feeling a whole range of different things. I mean, first of all, we end up feeling disconnected from God. It's like we resign ourselves to having secondhand conversations with God. We'll allow God to maybe speak to somebody else and we'll hear from them rather than believing that God could speak to us. We feel disconnected. For some of us, we might feel insecure. If someone ever says, well, what's God saying to you? You feel insecure thinking, I don't know what God is trying to say to me. Or maybe for others of you, you just feel shame. You think, what's wrong with me that I can't hear God speak? Why can't I hear His voice? And so we want to try and address some of these questions and uh, try to address it over the coming weeks. There's so much that we want to talk about because I sincerely believe that you have the capacity to hear God's voice, that God wants to speak to you. And I'm going to show you that from Scripture. And to do this, I'm going to break these questions down to try and figure this out together. And the first part of this question that I want to speak to is really, does God even speak, right? Does God speak? Because let's face it, if we can't find any evidence that God speaks, what's the point of the rest of the series? What's the point of all the other questions? So let's get to the bottom of this. Does God actually speak? Now, if you are in Scripture, I've got about five examples here to show you. For me, there is an overwhelming amount of evidence all throughout Scripture of God speaking. I just want to talk to you about some of those. One of them here is the story of Mount Sinai. Now, you might know this story where the Israelites are in the desert. They've come out of slavery in Egypt and they come to this mountain, Mount Sinai, and there's thunder and there's lightning. And God actually speaks in this story. He speaks to the people and they're trembling and afraid. And and they say to to Moses, don't let him speak to us. This This is too much. So God then speaks to Moses on their behalf. But in this story, God audibly speaks. In Exodus 34, there's this other great story of where God passes in front of Moses. You might remember this where um, God tucks Moses into a little crevice and he passes before him and Moses just gets a glimpse of the back of God. He he can't even face God. It's so bright. There's so much glory. And as God passes in front of Moses, God actually speaks about himself. He speaks about his own characteristics and his qualities, about being compassionate and slow to anger and full of mercy and love. God speaks about himself. So we see him speaking. In the book of 1 Kings 19, there's a great story about Elijah, where there's all these earthquakes and and wind and storm, all these elements, and God speaks to him through this gentle, soft voice. God speaks to him. 
In the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 3, we have Jesus' baptism. And you know, the story where the Holy Spirit comes down like a dove and, and God is audibly heard speaking from heaven saying, this is my son whom I love with whom I'm well pleased. God speaks. And it wasn't just Jesus that heard this as like an inner voice. Everybody there heard this voice from heaven. God spoke. And in Acts chapter 10, we have this other great story where Peter has a dream and he dreams about all these animals and these foods and and God's speaking to him about the kinds of things that he can eat. And so now God is speaking through a dream. And I hope that you're starting to see the pattern here, that there is story after story in Scripture of God speaking, speaking to His people, speaking in different methods, different ways. God speaking. So does God speak? The answer is yes. We see it all through Scripture. And you might be thinking, well, maybe God spoke then, but He doesn't speak now. But here's the thing about our God. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God doesn't change. And so if it was true that God spoke then, it is true that God speaks now. God speaks God speaks. And I think that's pretty cool. I mean, it's one of the unique things about Christianity. It's the only religion where a God would reveal themselves and speak to their people. That's how we know that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. He has revealed Himself. He speaks to His people. So does God speak? The answer is yes. That's our foundation But I suppose the deeper question in all of this is, well, does God speak to me? Because maybe He'll speak to somebody else. Maybe it's not for me. Does God speak to me? And um, to answer this, what I want to do is I want to dive into a Scripture passage. And if you have your Bibles here, we're going to open up to John chapter 10. Now, you might have a physical Bible. You might have a Bible on your phone. Feel free to pull them out. And otherwise, uh, we've got it here on the screen and you can follow along with us. John chapter 10 is our text for this morning. Now, just to give you some context to this passage. So right before at the end of John chapter 9, uh, Jesus heals a blind man. And um, the Pharisees, who are the teachers of the law, they get upset by this. They're upset because Jesus did it on their Sabbath. And um, they're trying to tell Jesus, they're trying to tell God, you can't do that. And it's not working so well because Jesus is God and He decides what happens. So He healed this man who was spiritually blind. And now they're having this conflict about whether or not Jesus should have done this or not. And so Jesus, out of this conflict, still in that context, still with Pharisees around and this man that's been healed from being blind, Jesus speaks this story, this parable about being a good shepherd. And they're familiar words to many of us. And in so many ways, these words were offensive to the Pharisees that he was having a conflict with. They're trying to make life hard for God's people. But here's Jesus trying to make things easy, trying to make it easy for you and I. John chapter 10, we'll read verses 1 through to 5, and then we'll stop and talk, all right? So it says this, these are the words of Jesus. He says, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. Listen to this. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Let's just stop there. This is a really great passage. Now, as we read through these verses, we start to get a glimpse of the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd, right? And in this parable, Jesus is the shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And who do you think the sheep are? What do you reckon? Us. We are the sheep. So he's the shepherd. We're the sheep. 
And this passage speaks to the nature of the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. And there's a few things that I think we can draw out and learn from this passage. We'll bring them up here. So the first thing is that the sheep recognise his voice and come to him. Right? These sheep, when they hear the voice of the master, they recognise it. It's not unfamiliar. It's not a stranger's voice. There is something personal about this relationship. So the sheep recognise his voice, but they don't just recognise it. They what? They come. They come to him. The sheep respond to his voice. They're obedient to his voice. So these sheep, they are familiar with the shepherd's voice. He calls his own sheep by name. And I think that's pretty personal and very special. You see, When Jesus speaks, He speaks to us by name. He knows every single one of your names in this room. I struggle to keep up with names. I struggle to remember all the names of all the people from different places that I go. God is not like that. He knows every single one of you by name. And when He speaks, He addresses you with the most personal term possible, your name. You're not a stranger in a crowd. You're not part of a group address. That shepherd speaks to his sheep by name. It then says he leads them out. This tells us the shepherd speaks to his sheep and provides guidance. I mean, how many of us are scratching our heads at times going, what does God want me to do? What do I do with my life? What decisions should I make? Well, this passage teaches us that Jesus speaks to us, his sheep, and he leads us. He gives us direction, guidance, Wisdom, He leads you and I. This passage says that they follow Him because they know His voice. So again, the sheep respond to the shepherd. They follow Him. They follow Jesus because they know His voice. It's like their ears are tuned into Him. They can hear Him through the crowd. And then lastly, it says they won't follow a stranger. They will run from Him because they don't know His voice. It's pretty interesting that these sheep, they won't follow a stranger because they're keyed in, they're clued in to the voice of the shepherd. You know, this week, um, Judy sent me a video clip and I can't put it up with certain, we can't play certain YouTube clips with licensing, but it was this clip of these sheep and a shepherd and they did this kind of experiment where other people were calling out to the sheep, trying to give them instructions and they wouldn't respond. (laughs) They wouldn't, wouldn't listen to anybody else. And the moment the shepherd spoke, All the sheep, they pop their heads up and they move towards the shepherd. And that's the picture that we have here. It's what Jesus knew about shepherding in this time is that there was a relationship between sheep and shepherd. They weren't just GPS tagged and watched from a satellite in the sky. This was personal. They knew his voice. He spoke their name. He led them. And so they responded to him. It's a pretty cool passage and it speaks this relationship that we can have with Jesus because we are His sheep. We can experience all of these things. But if I was to draw out a principle, what is the principle in this passage? I would say this to you, that all of Jesus' sheep can hear His voice, right? All of Jesus' sheep can hear His voice. It doesn't say the lead sheep could hear the voice. It doesn't say that the spotted sheep could hear his voice. doesn't say the green sheep. Has anyone read the green sheep book to kids? Where's the green sheep? It's not the green sheep that can hear the voice, all right? It's all of Jesus' sheep can hear his voice. And I want you to hear this this morning because I think some of you have come in here going, I would love to hear God speak, but maybe it's not for me. But Scripture teaches us that all of Jesus' sheep, every single one of you can hear His voice. And who are the sheep? Well, in this passage, the sheep are all those who have responded to the Master's voice, chosen to follow Him or in His sheep pen. And if you've made that decision to follow Jesus, you are one of His sheep. And if you want some extra Bible just to back that up, here it is. John 8, 47, the first part says, whoever belongs to God, hears what God says, right? If you belong to God, if you have confessed with your mouth, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you're one of those sheep. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) you're one of those sheep. I'm one of those sheep. And you can hear God's voice. Whoever belongs to Him can hear His voice voice. 
But here's something that I want to say to you. In the story about the sheep and the shepherd, there is another character. And that character is the thief, the robber, right? The thief and the robber. Jesus says the thief comes in illegitimately, tries to climb over the fence rather than coming through the gate. They come in through illegitimate means. And Jesus later on goes on, John 10.10, 10, you know, this passage around the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to bring life. Right, The thief and the robber exists in this story. And I've been reflecting on this this week, thinking, why would the thief or the robber want to separate the sheep from the shepherd? Why would the devil, why would our enemy not want us to be able to hear God's voice? And I feel like God gave me the answer. And the answer comes in another passage, Matthew 4.4, um, 4, and we'll bring that up for you. Jesus quotes this and it says, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Right? You and I, we don't live just by physical food alone. We live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, hearing God speak, the words of God, they are life for us. God's words are life. And I think that the devil wants to stop us from hearing from God because if he can block that, if he can cut that off, if he can cause us to think that we are deaf, then he's cutting us off from life. He's cutting us off from life. And for so many of us, it feels a bit like that. We've been cut off from the words of God. And in my story, in my life, I've had all these experiences for me of hearing God speak. And it's honestly what brings colour and life to my faith. Hearing God in a personal way, having that closeness and that connection. But when we think that we're deaf and we're cut off, it's like we're living our Christian life in black and white. But God wants to bring colour and life into your life and into your story. Because you aren't going to survive just by bread alone. You have life by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so we're not going to let the enemy trick us into thinking that we're deaf, into thinking that God doesn't speak, into thinking that we have to resign ourselves to hearing from God just from other people. We want to stand on what Scripture says here, that all of Jesus' sheep can hear His voice, that you can hear God speak. So does God speak? Yes, we see that in Scripture. Does God speak to me? Yes, all of Jesus' sheep can hear His voice. It's not just for the super Christians or or the, the special people in special roles. God speaks to each and every one of us. You have the capacity to hear God's voice. But it raises a couple of questions for us. And I just want to address two additional questions here. And the first one would be, well, can non Christians hear God's voice? Right? If we're talking about Jesus' sheep, they can hear His voice. Can a non-Christian hear God's voice? Well, let me give you some some examples from Scripture and let's see what happens here. In Genesis chapter 41, I'm not going to bring these up. I'm just going to speak to it. In Genesis 41, we have a guy named Pharaoh who has these, um, these dreams and he needs a guy named Joseph to come along. Pharaoh was experiencing God speaking, but he didn't know what it meant. He needed someone to come and interpret that. For him, he was hearing God speak. In Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, God stirred the heart of King Cyrus of Persia. God was speaking to a king, a non-believer, stirring his heart that allowed God's people to return to their home. God was speaking to this king. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 19, Jesus is before Pilate and Pilate's wife comes out and says, don't persecute this man. I've had a dream that he's innocent. God was speaking to Pilate's wife. In Acts chapter 9, verse 4, this guy named Saul was on the road to Damascus and he has this encounter where he's blinded and he hears God speak and suddenly Saul becomes Paul. And in every one of those situations, we see that God is speaking to someone who you would say is a non-Christian, a non-believer at the time. And so what I want to say to you is, it would be presumptuous of us to limit what God can and can't do. God can speak to anyone He wants to speak to. God can do anything He wants to do. And as His creations, we all have the capacity to hear Him speak and to hear His voice. I mean, I don't know, I've heard countless stories of people coming to faith simply because they encountered God in a dream. No faith before that, but He met them in a dream. 
So as I look at Scripture and the evidence before me, I see that God can speak to non-Christians, to people that don't know Him. But often they don't recognise who is speaking to them. They might think, oh, this is a, a strange coincidence. They don't understand the meaning of what is being said. Or in other situations, they don't obey. They don't respond. And so there is a difference. But God can speak to anyone. But then the next question I would, I would suppose I would pose and ask then is, well, if I'm a Christian, why can't I hear God's voice? Right, Ryan, you've said that God speaks to every one of his sheep, that I can hear his voice. I'm a Christian. I've been following him. Maybe I've never had that experience before. Why can't I hear God speak? Well, there's a number of ways that we could respond to that. And I, I'm going to address some of them now, but we're going to spend the next few weeks talking about some of these. Maybe for you, it's about learning to recognise the ways that God speaks. Maybe in your life, God has been speaking, but you didn't recognise it was Him. You may be familiar with the story of Samuel, the prophet in the Old Testament. He's laying in bed and he hears this voice, Samuel, Samuel. And he's like, oh, he thinks it's Eli. He thinks it's this other guy speaking. And he goes back three times thinking it's a human voice until Eli cues in and says, actually, that's God speaking. Samuel had to learn to recognise God's voice. Maybe in your life, it's about learning to recognise when God is speaking. For others, maybe for some of us, it's about creating time to listen, right? If, if prayer is about, you know, you've got two ears and one mouth, sometimes the way that we pray and talk to God is like we've got five mouths <laughs> and we talk God's ear off. We don't give Him any space. Maybe for some of us, it's about creating space when we're with God to listen or space in our busy schedule to clue in and say, God, what is it that you're saying? Maybe that's for you. Maybe for some of you in your life, you've got blockages and barriers. Maybe for you, there is sin standing in your life that's preventing you from hearing God speak clearly. We're going to address some of that in the coming weeks and speak about that. And you know what? Sometimes God is also silent. Sometimes God's voice is silent and mysterious. Think of the story of Job. And in those moments, we have to lean on what we know of God, who He is, His character, and trust Him. Sometimes God is silent. But more often than not, in my personal experience, I've not been listening. I've not been paying attention. There's been things in my life standing between me and God. So you can hear God speak. Maybe there's some barriers for you but we're going to be addressing some of that in the coming weeks. And so what does this look like in practice, right? If we've seen that God speaks, if all of Jesus' sheep can hear His voice, what does this look like in practice? Well, for me, um, it's always been about this idea that God is speaking, but about learning to listen, learning to recognise the ways that He speaks. And I just want to share with you a story about some of the ways that God has been teaching me to hear His voice. Now, uh, when I was a teenager, um, I came to faith. I came to faith in high school, similar to what we've heard this morning. And so I began praying and wanting to hear God speak. And I remember I started doing these walks around the, the ovals across the road from where I lived. And that was the way that I would create some space to go and hear God speak. And when I was walking around these ovals, I'd be talking to God. Now, I wasn't, wasn't doing good at listening. I was just talking and blabbing. I'd be saying, God, what about this? And what about that? And I started having these little experiences where um, it would be almost like you feel like that sensation when wind comes. Do you ever get like a little tingle if the wind blows through, maybe get some goosebumps? I just would have these experiences when I was chatting with God about, oh, like just had this little tingle experience. And at first I just ignored them. And over time I started to find that these were happening in places where God was prompting me. I'd be at a conference and someone would be saying, do you want to come forward for prayer? And I felt like a little bit of wind just blew in the room and just felt like God was just ushering me into that space. And the more it happened, the more I started to pay attention. And there was this defining moment where I said, all right, God, every time I feel this sensation, I'm just going to do whatever promptings on my heart. I'm just going to see if that is you. And so I went through this season where every time it felt like this little rush of wind, and it just uh, this is the way it impacted me that I would just say yes, Lord, to whatever it was. And time and time again, I was having these encounters of God speaking to me. And the way I would describe it was like training wheels. God was training me to hear His voice. And the reality is I still have those experiences, but nowhere near as frequently as what I did way back then. Why? Because Jesus has taught me to recognise His voice. I hear Him speak in so many ways through dreams, 
through situations that happen, through things that people say, through words that are sung in songs, through Scripture, through words that are standing out to me when I'm in the Bible, I've learned to recognise God's voice. He was teaching me to learn to hear Him, to hear Him speak. Now, for you, it may look really different. I don't know how God wants to speak to you. And there really is no formula. God is so creative in the ways that He communicates to us. But what I would say to you is, it's about learning to listen. Learning to listen and saying, all right, God, what is it that you want to say? How do you want to speak? So what do we do with this? How do we apply this? How do we start to hear God speak? Well, with every biblical application, we always have to ask ourselves, what's God's part in this and what's my part in this? So what I would say is God's part in this is to speak, right? God is always speaking. He's always wanting to speak. That's His part in this equation, that He has wisdom to offer you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to speak to you by name. God's role in all of this is to do the talking, So guess what your role is in all of this? What do you think? The listening. Our part in applying this is being good listeners. That's what I'd say to my kids at home. Kids, we need you to be good listeners. Church, we need you to be good listeners because this is how you start to learn to hear God's voice, to hear Him speak. And in a minute, um, I'm going to just show you a method for praying to hear God speak. But in all of this, I just want to remind you of the gospel because it is so important that we keep coming back to the gospel, the truth. And I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. This is what it says. It says, In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the blood of Christ. You see, this is the gospel. This is the truth, right? We were all once living far from God, wandering through this world without hope. God has called us out of that darkness into the light. He has brought us into His family through the blood of Christ. You now have access to God. You have personal access to God. This means that any barrier that was stopping you from hearing God's voice has been taken away on the cross. You belong to Jesus now. He knows you by name. And so you can hear His voice. You can hear God speak. You can hear His voice. So what I want to do as we finish here is I just want to teach you a method for prayer so that you can actually practice this at home and practice hearing God's voice. Now, what I'm going to do is we're just going to, um, we're going to practice this together. This is called listening prayer, listening prayer. And it's complicated because all we're going to do is listen. We're going to sit in silence. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to become distracted you're going to start thinking about what's for lunch. (laughs) You're going to think about the murmur of children downstairs. You might think about what's the person next to me thinking about this. I don't want you to think about those things. When those distractions come to your mind, I just want you to say, hey, Jesus, help me to push that out. I want to hear what it is that you want to say. And we're going to practice this for a moment, just sitting in silence. And what I want you to be looking for or paying attention to is some little promptings. Does God bring a picture to your mind? Is there a song that you can't get out of your head? Is there a scripture verse that you're thinking about? Is there a colour that comes to mind? Last week when I did this at Austral, about a third of the people there had something come to mind. One person had a colour. God was speaking through a colour. We need to be mindful of anything that might just come to your mind, and it's okay if nothing does, but we want to start practising the discipline of listening for God to speak. So, I'm just going to say a word of prayer for a second and we're going to listen and start to see if God might begin to speak to you and I. So Jesus, in this moment, we just quieten our hearts and we open our ears and we now pray that you would speak. What is it that you would like to say to us?
Let's just pause there for a tick. So this is a no obligation question. And I just want to know just by a response of hands in the room. Like, so don't feel like you, if you put your hand up, you have to do anything or get up on the stage. I was just curious to know. But as you sit in this space, does anyone feel like God was saying something to them or that there was a word or a picture or something that was just on their mind? Anyone feel like that? Okay. Look at that, guys. A number of hands around the room. And I want you to see those hands because you might be thinking, well, maybe God doesn't speak. But here in this room, we're seeing it. We're seeing hands go up. Now, second question, no obligation if you put your hand up. Is there anything God put in your heart that you'd like to share? A word, a picture, or something that God might have been speaking to you, you thought might, might be worthy of sharing with anybody here? Yeah, Vanessa. God gave me a sense of anticipation and joy that his people would spend time listening. The delight of a father's heart to spend time with his children. Anybody else want to share anything? Brenda and Tammy, Cadron? Um, for me, it was um, Amazing Grace, that song, and just reminding that I'm saved through Jesus. Um, just to fear not, for I am with you. It doesn't matter what goes on in life, that God is always always with you and for me not to be fearful. Um, so I just had the first song that we sang, a few um, lines going over in my head. There's joy in the house and God is surely in this place. So Does anyone else want to say anything? I just had um, part of Philippians 4 on my heart, just telling God what I need, that he wants to hear from me um, what I need, and then I'll experience his peace. So good. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to share? I'm going around the room. If you're here. Anne? Yep, and I'll come back over that way. We've got space for this. The word was fresh, and I was thinking of Woolies, the fresh food people, but it was like God was saying we should be the fresh news people, that we should have fresh love for people. So good. Thank you. Who had their hand up over here? I saw. Yep, Abby, Robert. Um, to stop, to rest, and to follow, because he is in control. He is the master. He will guide, protect, and provide. One of the things I saw was a set of armour, um, something I was expected to wear, something that we need to clad ourselves in, and yet so many people forget. Im an important thing to do. So, yeah. Anyone else want to share? Yep, Vivica, Shana, Phil, I saw you. Um, yesterday at LL, I had a prayer um, for some of my control issues. And in that prayer, um, I prayed for forgiving myself. At the time, I didn't feel like I was forgiven. The one word I got just now was forgiven. Um, I think I believe it now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> um, I think God has always been telling me this, but I just... Every time I open up and listen, I need to stop talking so much <laughs> and just listen more. Even when I'm talking to God, like if you know me, I'm a person that talks a lot, but um, I just need to be better at listening. Yeah. Thank you. Phil, last one for now. I just thought it would come to my mind. Uh, the, <clears throat> the famous preacher John Wesley said, God is with us and the best is yet to come. Man. Can we just thank God for what he's saying, huh? Like, Because as I listen around the room here, I'm not hearing anyone say anything that doesn't sound right to me. Like I'm hearing encouragements about being forgiven and wearing spiritual armour and the best is to come and this vision of bringing something fresh. I'm hearing God speak. And I feel like what God is saying to me as I hear this is um, in Acts chapter 2, they quote a passage from Joel and it says, In those days I will pour out my spirit. 
and young men and old men will dream dreams and speak prophecies. I know I'm paraphrasing that passage, but that's what we're talking about here, that in these days, God is pouring out His Spirit and going to speak through His people. And we are hearing that in this room. And that's what happens when we give, what, five minutes, 10 minutes of our space here together to listening to what God is saying. And so I want to say to you, as you go out of here, practice listening to God's voice. He wants to speak to you. He wants to speak through you. The things that God is saying is, is, saying is not just for you. It could be for others that need that encouragement. And if this morning you're feeling like, I didn't hear anything, take encouragement from what you have heard around you and keep listening, keep learning, keep coming back as we talk about this. So I want to pray and then we're going to wrap this up, okay? Jesus, we thank you. You're speaking amongst us this morning. We thank you that when we create space, that we can hear your voice. And so, Lord, we want to take all of those words to heart this morning. We receive them as words that you have given us. Help us to be good listeners. Help us to trust your voice, to learn to know your voice. And I pray that today and in the days and weeks that are ahead, that we would be known as a church full of people that are listening to your voice. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen.